Today's show is pre recorded. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all don't know y'all better act. Hat on, hat on, suit on, suit on, looking like the trap dog, giving them all. Stress, like a million bucks, bucks, Got things in his cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be but Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody listen to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. everybody you are listening to the voice of come on dig me now one and only steve harvey got a radio show well i, I gotta tell you something everybody and this is great news for everybody that um, i'll share something with your principle of becoming successful at whatever level you choose it can be successful in the relationship successful in the family Success is may be considered to you becoming a homeowner. It could be uh, being debt free. Your idea of success could be sixty thousand a year, fifty thousand a year, a hundred thousand dollars a year. It doesn't matter. If you're considering it, if you're wanting it, if you have a desire to become successful, I want to share with you the very beginning of that. If no one's ever done it. I'm I'm going to say the beginning of it today. See, Scripture uh, makes it very clear for us that you don't, the only thing you need to become successful is already inside of you. It's not an external need. God wouldn't do that to you. He puts the core basis of everything you need inside of you. So if you discover it, If you tend to it, nurture it, fertilize it and water it, it grows, it branches out. Then it reaches out externally and it starts grabbing things outside of there to make it even bigger, stronger, better, last longer. But in the very beginning, you don't need anything. It's all within you. And if you cultivate your relationship with God, it comes out, it flourishes. Now, let me tell you. That thing that I'm talking about is a God-given gift that he has given to all of us. We all possess it. It is all within us. Everybody has a gift. Had somebody told me what I know now, back then, I would have saved myself tons of mistakes. I just didn't know the principles. I had to learn them all. Well, one of the principles of becoming successful is your mindset. You got to get your mind right. Now, this mindset is simply a decision that you can make. I can't get it for you. I can tell you what to do, but you got to make the decision. You that's listening have to decide, you know what? I'm going to go on and get at it. I'm going to stop renting. I'm going to become a homeowner. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop living check to check. I'm 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 going to put a budget together. I'm going to stop stepping out on my family. 
I'm going to go home. I'm going to get it together. I'm going to stop using. You, When you make these decisions, that's correcting your mindset. Now, the closer connection you have with God, the more help you get sustaining the mindset. How many times have you started to do something and you stopped? How many resolutions have you made at the new year and stopped by February? Over with by mid-January, done in March. Because if you don't have a clear connection with your creator to help you carry out the other force out there, that evil force is designed to get you not to reach your goals, get you not to come to resolution with whatever the resolutions are you made so he can, so you can consider yourself not worthy or a failure or unable to do something. But the more things you are able to accomplish, the greater your confidence goes grows. So we got to get your mindset together. Your mindset is a decision that you have to make. When you make the decision, you can begin the process. Your mindset is also a will of yours, a will along with the decision, a will, a willingness to do right, a willingness to change, a willingness to be better. It's going to then cause you to have to make a decision to make a change of direction. Don't go where everybody else going. You got to go your way now. You can't follow the crowd. You got to take a less travel path. You cannot do this without changing your direction. You can't keep hanging with the people you've been hanging with if you want to be different. Because they not. Then you have to develop an obligation to yourself. You've got to say, you know what, for me and my family, or if you don't have a family, for me, I owe it to myself. I have an obligation to myself to be the best me that I can possibly be. To be the best self that I can possibly be. To be the best father, the best man, the best husband, the best wife, the best mother, the best daughter, the best son, the best student, the best employee, the best owner. You have an obligation to yourself to, to give yourself a shot at the best life you can. That's an obligation. You owe that to yourself. Why would you not live the best life that you possibly could? You have an obligation to yourself. Why would you cheat yourself like that? Why would you take yourself and never allow yourself to see the goodness that's already in you, to have the abundance that's been promised to you, to go and explore all the riches out there that's available to you? And but 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 one of the worst ways that you can rob yourself of the joy of your obligation is to keep comparing yourself to somebody else. Because guess what, man? That ain't your life. You ain't Jay Z and Beyonce. You you not you not Oprah instead, man. You that's not who you are. Quit looking around at everybody else. That comparison of everybody else will keep you broken. It'll keep you unhappy. You won't even be able to be grateful for what you have because you steady talking about what you don't have. That's not the way, man. You have an obligation to yourself to be the best you you can be, not the best them. You're not them. Stop trying to be them. Be the best you. It's cool. You you got a nice little house. That's cool. You know how many big houses is empty and filled with hate and resentment? I'd rather have a smaller house filled with joy in it than to go to a big house. Man, Prince got a line in the song that says, I realized in his best disguise, a pretty house don't make a home. Man, don't you know I know how true that is. So I'm just trying to tell you. Now, another part of the mindset is taking dead aim at your life's goals and ambitions. What are they? What are your goals and your visions? What do you see for yourself? What do you dream about? If you knew you couldn't fail at whatever it is you were attempting, what would you go attempt? See, that's what we need to be after. It's a mindset, y'all. It's a decision. It's a will. It's a change of direction. It's an obligation to yourself. It's taking dead aim at your life's visions and goals. Come on, man. You got to get your mind wrapped around this thing. You owe it to yourself to live the best life you can be. Come on, man. Talk to God. God got something for you. You just got to check in with him.
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Steve Harvey. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. This show would be nothing without the following people. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Strawberry. Thank you, Steve. Good morning. Carla Pharrell. Good morning, crew. Keir Spates, better known as Junior. Morning, Unc. Morning, everybody. J. Anthony Brown, better known as Bitter Man. What up, man? Ladies and gentlemen, Thomas W. Miles. Better known as The Fool, a.k.a. Nephew Tommy slash Little Man. (laughs) Good morning, everybody. And the Little Man is just for aggravation purposes. He's really not that small. That's all. (laughs) We know know how to push each other's buttons, though. We've worked together. Everybody know everybody's buttons. We've worked together for so long. Just lay on it. Yeah. We we lay on it. I don't have a button. It's bitter. We ain't found it yet, but we're going to find it. Bitter as you are. Oh, we, he has oh, a, a button. Yeah. Oh, oh, you have a button. Yeah. Oh, it's Steve, called Steve's been marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. It's what? Oh, his button is called marriage. <laughs> oh, marriage, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you bring it up, he start drawing. I know. The last time I brought it up, he snapped at me, remember? <laughs> it went <laughs> in. <laughs> Oh, and I know another button, but I'll only use it if he piss me off. Uh-oh. What? Oh, oh, cause you Uh-oh. know you've known him the Ooh, longest. Yeah. Oh, I got button. For you got some buttons. He got uh. another button. <laughs> 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 it's big and red. It's the one same size one sitting on Trump desk. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's, it's nuclear. Okay. Mm. Right, let's move on. Let's move on. He's mad, but you, you just talking about yeah. the yeah. button. You know, okay, yeah. he know what it is then. Yeah, let's. Can we just? Yeah, yeah, we've been together a long time, me and my boy right now, boy. It was the best thing putting him on the show man kind of gave me like a balance point you know <laughs> you know but you see how i talk to me when i come into work yeah y'all ain't never talk yes. to me like that yeah no but you all have history man oh he no, talked to me so crazy when i come to work if we didn't know what you up guys, blankety blank we would yeah we would think yeah. you hated each other the way you talk to each other that's just yeah. amongst us i don't do it on the other job no, no. but that's love that's, though that's, that's your that's your love lie. language that's a lie, Junior. He lying right now. What did he say no. when he doesn't do it anywhere else? He come in there on the days he ain't on the air. Uh. He come in there and give us a gift. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's fun. It's Monty. Yeah. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, run that prank back with the nephew right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now for the nephew to run that prank back. What you got for us, Neff? Well, Shirley, sometimes you got to get out on your own and save some souls. This right here is mobile baptismal pool. Mobile baptismal pool. In order to do the works that is needed, sometimes you got to get out and do it on your own. We come by and we baptize you in your driveway. Cat dog, if you would, mobile baptismal pool. How convenient. Hey, 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 be careful. I'll stop by there Saturday. <laughs> Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a Mr. Wilson. It's Wilson. Why are you doing? Who's this? Uh, how you doing? Uh, my name is Brother Springwater, man. Listen, we uh, we, we, we got uh, paid to actually come by and do some services to uh, for, for you by some friends of yours, and we wanted to actually call and see about scheduling and see what you had available uh, some, some, some of my services. What, y'all plan on cutting some grass? What, uh, what y'all do? What kind of services y'all have? Actually, sir, uh, you've got some friends that have actually spent a, a great amount of money on you. And what we do is, uh, we have a, um, baptismal on wheels service. And what we do is we go and we, um, we baptize people, uh, at their home. And, and baptismal on wheels has been, it's a new, um, company but we've we've baptized over a thousand people now we have a a truck with that which actually has a baptismal pool on the back of it and we actually come to your home and we will baptize you in your driveway and and make you whole again 
So we've uh, been, uh, bro, bro, excuse me, here, brother Water, brother Spring. What, what's your name again? I'm sorry, I didn't, Spring I didn't Water. Spring Water. Spring Water. You want to come to my house and give me a baptism in my front yard? We want to baptize you right there in your driveway. Your friends are paid for the services. And my, uh, my friend, what friend will pay for me to get baptized? I, man, I've been baptized already, Doc. Well, from my understanding, baptized. sir, that evidently you you had some some bumps and bruises, and 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 they seem to uh, to believe that you need to be washed and cleaned I mean, again. I mean, that's all good. That's all. That's all. That's all good. But I mean, things. Are, I mean, thing. Be that mad, uh, that it may, man. I mean, I I've been baptized. I go to church. You know, uh, uh, me and the Lord don't have no problems. I mean, we all have setbacks. But for you to pull up with your pool in front of my house to say you finna baptize me, that that doesn't make any sense to me, Doc. I mean, well, see, see, sir. Sometimes when some people are not able to go to the house of the Lord and get baptized, you know, we're making it a lot more convenient for you. But we can I actually. I don't need come... no convenience. I don't need no convenience. What I need convenience for? You asking me to come to my house on a Tuesday to baptize me in my driveway, does that make any sense to you, Brother Water? I mean, come on. If you really sit back and think about it, does that make any sense to you uh, uh, to come for, 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 for the convenience? First of all, sir, that 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 that's, that's brother spring water. But what I'm brother, trying to what I'm trying to any say is any type of water that, is holy water, spring water. It doesn't make no difference to me. You can't come to my neighborhood and baptize me in front of my house, sir. sir what is all the anger? Cool water. See, this is this is what your friends are talking about. That I don't you, give a damn what my friends are telling you, man. And anybody, which which one of my friends gonna recommend you to come to my damn house? Sir, I'm I'm I'm, I'm not. I'm, my step, and my step, I'm a do let me that don't even make any sense to me. You understand? Sir, I'm not I'm not at any liberty to tell you who actually uh hold up but you're in the liberty to come to my damn house and baptize me, but you can't tell me who the hell go see you. But you're not at liberty. what type man, come on. You don't even come on, does that make sense to you, Doc? Come on. That doesn't make any no way in the world I'm gonna allow you to come and bring your pool in front of my house and baptize me. Then I'm asking you as and you you supposed to be a pastor. You're supposed to be baptized. I'm asking you, okay, which friend of mine is sending you to, you know, to let you know I need to be baptized. You're going to tell you liberty? Sir, sir, all I want to know, uh, basically, you, I've already been paid. I'm, I'm coming, I'm, I'm calling asking you about your schedule. You're not on baptizing me. I've been baptized. I'm going to baptize you on Tuesday in your driveway. Man, I'll tell you what. If you come to my house in front of my driveway, you better bring the whole congregation. You understand? You better bring the deacons, the brothers. The sisters and everybody else, if you think I'm going to be baptized in my This you is the problem. Me? This is because what your no, friends are talking about. This is why you need to be baptized and cleansed again and washed in the blood of the Lamb. This is what's wrong. You need to be cleansed. That's what's wrong with you, Mr. Wilton. What's wrong with me? No, what's wrong with you is calling me in the middle of my work day telling me I need to be baptized in front of my house. If I need to be baptized and go get some holy water, I go down to the church. I don't need you coming in front of my house making a whole circus with all your friends and some white sheep talking about you want to baptize me. That's from my, understand, me. From my understanding, from my understanding, Mr. Wilton, you've missed two Sundays already this month. Sundays? Just, man, I can go anywhere and get the one. I don't need you coming here because you telling me I missed two damn Sundays. I'm going to miss this Sunday, too, because the football game coming on. Sir, all I know is I've been paid to do a job. I will be there Tuesday morning at 7 o'clock, and we will baptize you before you go to I, work on Tuesday morning. I tell morning. you what. I tell you what. You come to my house at 7 o'clock in the morning. I swear on your Lord, I'm going to bust your ass. You understand me? You will not come to my house telling me you're going to baptize me. I don't give a damn who paid you. You understand? I will drown your ass in the water. Matter of fact, now, bring you, your deacons, and everybody else, we're going to have a pool party in that. You understand? I'm going to get all of this anger and all of this, this, these problems you have within you. We are going to purge your body and get it out your system. I don't want your ass cleansing me. I tell you what. I tell you what. Brother Spring Water, is it that's the call? It's Brother Spring Water. You go get baptized on Tuesday morning. I don't give a damn who pays you, who calls you. Bring your and I'm going to you up. I guarantee you. I'm going to dry your sight. I got one more thing I want to say to you. Would you listen you to me? Got a matter of fact, I'm busy. You ain't got to say to me. I got to go. You understand? You ain't got I got one more me. thing I want to say to you. Is you listening to me? What, man? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy, Mason. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something, man. <laughs> Boy! <laughs>
Let me tell you, I was about to bring some head up to heaven. I was about to act a fool on y'all if y'all would have showed up at my crib. You understand me? <laughs> Boy, Tommy, y'all ain't got shit better to do. <laughs> I got to ask you something. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Man, you know it's the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> oh, I'm praying for you, nephew. Coming up next, ask the CLO, our Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, in the building right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time for Ask the CLO. The Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey, is in the building. Are you ready, sir? Let's go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> this one is from Talia in Atlanta. Talia says, my husband and I decided to spice up our sex life after being married for almost 20 years. Back in the day, we'd have sex anywhere. So he had a brilliant idea to have sex in the back seat of our car in the parking lot of a Best Buy. The sneaking mm. part was fun, and we were almost done when someone yelled on the uh, knocked on the window, and uh, it was a parking lot security guard. He yelled, "Hey, you can't do that here! The security guard is my son's friend." What if uh. he recognized me and tells our son? How do we explain this? <laughs> Whoa! That's what you worried about? Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean. It was with your husband. Your problem would be if that wasn't your husband. <laughs> you, you can know. always say, boy, you know, good and hell well, we wasn't doing nothing in that damn parking lot. I had dropped a french fry down in the crack of that seat and was trying to get down in there and get that thing. That's <laughs> all that was. <laughs> damn french fry. And I still, well, I found I found french fry from last summer in there. Just say that. You know, you ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> But she was naked, though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> moving she was on. Naked. Mama. <laughs> they were having it was almost well. Like I got hot. You know, I was trying to find a french fry, and he got hot as hell in there. Because <laughs> it took me so long to find a damn french fry. Okay. Uh -huh. So I just took my clothes. And what was daddy doing? What was daddy doing? <laughs> he was naked, too. Looking. Brian, you know how your daddy is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on. Ronnie in North Carolina, I'm not using my real name because I would be in a world of trouble if my friend finds out I'm messing with his oldest daughter. For the record, she's 36 and fine. I'm only 42 and my friend is much older than me. So it's not like I'm a dirty old man. I have a real attraction to his daughter and sex is the best because we've known each other for so long. She's ready to be honest with her dad, but I need more time. How do I tell my friend this? You're going to get your ass whipped up. Boy. <laughs> yeah. That ain't, this ain't nothing but a just ass whipping on the horizon. Oh, That's no. all this is yes, right Not here. Not in the man. future. <laughs> you know. But they're in love, yeah. see? See, what if they're in love? she wants to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, you know, now, okay, let's let's do a little bit of math. She 36. Let's assume he's 56. Let's say she had him. He was a father at 20. Oh, dad. Let's oh, say dad. 18. Let's say he's 54, you 42, the girl 36. He he ain't going to handle it right, man. He no. just ain't. No, he ain't. He, he just he ain't. Because he doesn't want his friend yeah. messing with his pregnant daughter. Yeah. Well, so, what should he do? End the friendship? Well, you know, being uh, being honest ain't an outcome. He keeps telling y'all, where is this honesty is the best policy? Where they keep coming from? <laughs> How many times have I told y'all about that? <laughs> Just so lie when do? Do? I, I don't yeah. see. Why, why, why I keep proving this to y'all over and over and over. <laughs> Honesty is not the best policy. I am a proponent of this. Don't, don't mm -hmm. do this. So they should just yeah. keep Cat is with you to your grave. Yes. Huh? What if it turns into something? I mean, it yeah. has turned into something. He, he's that's all it's going to be, sure. How, what, all it's turned into what? A real a relationship. relationship. That ain't what he said is. He said it's just the best sex. That's all he said that is. He said he has a real attraction to her, and she wants to tell him. Her a dad. real attraction. Oh. See, this is how okay. people get hurt listening to y'all. Huh? <laughs> this is how Surely, people get hurt. Do you know how many real attractions? Listen to this, y'all. And all of y'all know this is true. Do you know how many real attractions you got to keep to your damn self? <laughs> 
<laughs> a lot yeah. of them. Oh, yeah, that's where the lying stuff comes in. Okay. Oh, okay, close. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Take it to the grave. Yeah, take, it to the grave. Yeah. take it to the grave. Yeah. Yeah. Keep the peace. Yeah. Why are you looking like that? <laughs> you disappointed in the team. You, you know, know why. Yeah. I don't, I don't, what is this a damn discussion for? <laughs> Yeah. Which uh, this is obvious. Huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Sometimes okay, your attraction come in the room. You got to leave. You know what I mean? You got to get the hell out of there. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Big Daddy in Birmingham. We've moved on, Steve. Says, I've been driving trucks for 10 years and I'm ready for a career change. I am trying to lose weight and stop smoking, but it's hard. The reason I want a lifestyle change is because I met a special lady recently and I want to see her more. She says she gets lonely when I'm away, so it causes her to date other men. She said if I'm home, she will be all about me. My kid said I'm falling for a garden tool. And they told me to get advice from Uncle Steve, the CLO, before she breaks my heart. Is she worth my time or not? CLO. Mm. Well, Shirley, did he give an age? No, but he's been driving trucks for 10 years. Okay. Okay, you've been driving trucks. Your name is Big Daddy. Mm -hmm. You trying to lose weight. Yeah, you trying to lose weight because you got this girl you like. And and stop smoking, cause you got this girl that's like, and you and when you away, she say she misses you, and it causes her to date other men. And if you was around all the time, she could be about you. About you you want to get in a relationship with a person like this? Because see, this this, if you were here, I could be all about you. Could be you for right now. You driving off too many times. It could work its way into just hell where well, you went to the store. I was sitting here. <laughs> so I wanted to date. You took so your ass date. down to that store and took 40 minutes. <laughs> hell, so we was just sitting on the porch talking. <laughs> so I entertained a gentleman. <laughs> I don't know, man. Way? I don't know. I would lose weight and quit smoking so I could be healthy and meet the chick of my dreams. She may not be it, dog. Right. She may yeah. not be it. All right, CLO, good advice. Good advice as always. These are things you want to say to your mate. That you really can't. But you really can't. Every man in a relationship okay. at one point has wanted to say these things. Oh, Watch okay. yourself. Watch yourself. If you got a hangnail on your foot, <laughs> don't rub that up against mine. Oh, no. You know what I'm saying? No, please don't. Come on, man. Stupid. How you don't know that scratching everything? <laughs> no. I know it's sexy to throw your leg across mine, but let me just tell you something. <laughs> Watch that, yourself, Jay. When we first met, uh-huh. When we first like hooked up, that leg was a lot lighter. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> right there, right there. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Don't get in trouble. That's. I'm just saying it's not gonna stay that long. That's how. No. I love you, but that leg is a little. Bit... <laughs> I hate him. I hate him with everything. Yeah, my yeah. fiber is my I, I got You know what I'm talking about? That yeah, leg is man. not as light as it was when we met. Yeah. It's some weight on that. That leg, leg is cutting off my shirt. <laughs> leg under there talking about yeah. help me, help me. Yeah. I'm like about to lose a foot. I'm, I'm, I'm already diabetic. <laughs> I need. <laughs> you need everything circulating. Yeah, man. <laughs> ah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Jay, it is time for one of our favorite segments, Comedy Roulette. Yeah, please do. (laughs) Because Junior is a comedian, Tommy is a comedian, Uh I'm a comedian, and Steve's a comedian. Because we're all four comedians. Since you have four comedians on the show, uh, we take four steps, put them on a wheel, wherever they land, we make it funny. Wow. And why do we do that, Jay? Because. <laughs> Come on. Because Junior's a comedian, yeah. I'm a comedian. I'm a comedian. And you are a comedian. Boy, that's what it is. Who is it now? It's you, Jay, Tommy, and Stay Keir. Out of this <laughs> Let's uh, go. No, because you take the fun out of it. Read them, Shirley. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, number one, things people say 
who've been in jail a long time. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh. Uh huh. Color mm. TV. Okay, get this one, guys. Directions that black people give you. Oh, All right. Oh God. Okay. Okay. Uh, excuses men say when they're not getting a lot of sex. Mm. Oh. We could do that all day. Uh-huh. <laughs> we could do that for an hour if you want to. Some, some people say who don't have cable. That's another good one. All right. It's funny. Oh, this is unusual. What? It's stopped on directions that black people give oh, you. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because black go. people give different directions. Uh huh. Uh-huh. What do you mean, Jay? Okay. Here we go. Okay. What you want to do is, do you up. know where the Baptist church used to be? It's not there anymore. <laughs> if you, you don't know where it used to be? Well, you're not going to find it. Good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Directions. Uh-huh. I I know a lot about this because I am black. Okay, and so right. I do have okay. a I do know some directions that black people mm-hmm. give. Uh-huh. This is mm-hmm. also a direction. When you back it up, uh-huh. mm-hmm. come on, come come on, <laughs> come on, come on back, come on back, oh, come on, you you come on. Joe Junior, huh? you got it on this side. Yeah, <laughs> you got it on. Yeah, come on. Hold what you got. There you go. There you go. That's what you're looking for right there. That's it. Hold what you got. Direction uh, black people give. Go ahead, Tommy. All right, ahead, all right. Man. Now, look, this is what you want to do. Now, you want to okay. go down here to the second stop sign. You're going to make a left right there. Go down to the next block. I don't know what street that is, but go down to the next block. It's a store there. Go in that store and ask for Lucky, and Lucky know how to get it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Yes. Uh. Come on, Steve. All right, the real simple, the real simple. All right, it's right out there across from Earl Neal. That, that's that's yeah. what black people say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, directions that black people give you, Jay. We're different with okay. ours. Okay, <laughs> you're going to go down a bit ways, and you're going to see an old man sitting on the porch. Now, if he ain't on the porch... You yeah. just keep driving or wait till he come out, and then you make a left right there. <laughs> this is it? You can't, you can't miss it. Yeah, right. I've this, heard that. This is directions that black people give you. What you mean you don't know where we at? We at the same place where Liddy was shot. <laughs> right there. How come you don't remember? You been when Liddy got shot? I was there. Keith was there. Dad was there. We at the exact same spot when Liddy got shot. Oh my gosh! All right, now this is what you want to do. Take this road. This road. Take this road. The what? Back? This road. Take this road. You go down this road. Now this here is is uh 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 asphalt. Now. Uh-huh. Wait till you see a dirt road. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, when you see a dirt road, that's where you make your right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You ought to see the house coming up on the right side. If you go further than that, you might see a clan rally. That means you went too far. Uh-huh. Oh, you, see? you might want to back it up. You might want to back it up. Go ahead, Steve. Go Come ahead. on, Steve. Directions that black people give. Make a left when you get down there and see the big black tree that got the squirrels in it. <laughs> And you got to be looking. <laughs> These are directions oh, that black people give you. Yes. Here you go. Here you go right here, y'all. Uh-huh. How much gas you got in your car? Because <laughs> you ain't going to make it on a half a tank. You're going to need to have a whole full tank of gas <laughs> to get there. Why? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> go ahead, Junior. Come on, Junior. I got it. All right, <laughs> These are directions that black people give you. Okay, you coming to the family reunion? Yeah. Okay. Follow the North Star till they run in the Cheryl house. <laughs> what? <laughs> Just follow the North Star till they run in the Cheryl house. I love it. These Funny. are directions that black people give. Yeah, we're different All right. with ours. All right, you're trying to get to the convention yeah. center. That's where you're trying to go. Okay, uh-huh. let me tell you what you yes. need to do. Don't, I'm, I can't get you there, but I can get you there. But let me do what I need you to do. What? Take Maine. 
Uh-huh. Get to Maine. If you go down Maine, uh-huh. uh, uh, Second Street, I think Commerce, Commerce in Maine. Uh-huh. It's, it's it's a girl uh, named Glitter that's a prostitute. She right there on the corner. <laughs> Glitter, get Glitter in that car, and Glitter know how to get you to that convention. Uh huh. <laughs> <Glitter's laughs> <GPS. laughs> Thank you, Glitter. Okay, Glitter. All right, directions the black people give you, Steve. Go ahead, Steve. All right, would you go all the way down now till you don't see black people no more. <laughs> then come back two blocks. That's it. That's, that's your location. The yeah. black people get it. Here you go. Here you go right here. All right. Here you go. All right, coming up more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it's time now for another round of Would You Rather... Uh, here we go. Would you rather never be able to take a hot shower or never be able to eat fried food again? Specifically fried chicken and fried catfish. Would oh, I never, I know, I never have fried food again. Yeah. I can't take a shower. Hot shower. Oh, no. Um, hot shower. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, who on a cold shower? <laughs> a lot of people take cold showers. Uh-uh. I don't know how. I don't. But they do it. Uh-uh. No. Uh-huh. Not, not fried. No, I'm through with the fried chicken. I need the shower. I, I, yeah. I take too many a day. I need that shower. It can't be cold. Uh, oh, yeah, we learned yesterday your nephew just... takes three showers a day. <laughs> y'all stop. stop letting him tell y'all that. I He's live clean. with him before he's taking no damn three showers a day. Well, you, you got stuff to do. He on the set. With you. You he got radio show. Anything. He got radio show. He <laughs> tour. And he got TV show. And a game show. Where the hell he got time to take three damn showers a day? <laughs> what y'all be letting him tell y'all this stuff for? I do. We know he's Wait, a jerk. Three damn showers. Hold up. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let, uh-huh. let me paint this picture for you. He got a four hour radio show that he do every day. Uh huh. He got a TV show. He got uh-huh. a game show. He tour. Uh-huh. He got kids. He got to go to baseball games with. He got to go to proms and stuff with. He got family time and he got a wife. How he take three showers a day? (laughs) Man, he work. (laughs) Y'all letting him tell you that fault. I get to. How would you know all this? (laughs) Because I got more than he got. (laughs) (laughs) They got no time for no damn three showers a day. (laughs) Got to make this money, man. Three damn showers a day. (laughs) Oh, God. Uh. <laughs> Hell, I get home sometimes. I fall asleep in my office. Ain't gonna be no damn shower. <laughs> now, but you're uh, rich. Sitting up in here. Oh, man. <laughs> sitting up here. You just like my stylist, Ellie, with his little simple ass. <laughs> Over, overdoing and all this, all this lotion and baby in his damn. So get your love. We can go, man. <laughs> sitting up in here rubbing all between your damn toes. Put some oil on your foot and let's go. <laughs> Sitting up in here like he take all his damn showers. Man, you ain't that damn clean. We got to go. <laughs> I, I do. Oh, man. Thank, Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Next one. Y'all, y'all uh, let him tell you that for. Go ahead, Sheila. Would you rather have the ability to said. read minds or would you rather have the ability to move objects with your mind? Moving them objects. You want to read minds or would you want to move things them. with your uh-uh. mind? I know you don't like me already. No. I don't need to read your mind for that. <laughs> no, I don't need that. I want to move stuff with my mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get ready. We consulted an expert because we wanted to know the real deal, okay? Steve is here with his breakup handbook. All right, these are things that you <laughs> need to have in mind after the breakup. Mm-hmm. Most most of this is for fellas. <laughs> yeah, that is for Because <clears throat> when we take a breakup hard, it's ugly. <laughs> it's ugly out there. Now, these are things from... Steve Harvey's Breakup Handbook. How to act when you break up. Mm. All right, now, here's rule number one. You are allowed only one drunk 
dial. You know yeah, how you mean. call them up when you drunk. Uh-huh. You only get the one. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounds like something like this. Hello is me. <laughs> You know who me is. <laughs> Don't play with me. You know who me is. Don't play with my emotions. <laughs> who is me? You know you 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 know who me is. Who How many is? you get? One. You get one. You get one of them. <laughs> All right. Now here's the next rule: you are not allowed to roll up on your ex. Just cause you see they car parked outside the club, the restaurant, or church. Don't go in there. Says who? Wait, you man. can't do that shit. We, we, we broke up. Yeah. I can't go in there if I see the car. I know she didn't hear praise you the can, Lord. No, you can't roll up on her. Is she in there praising the Lord? No, I got something to do with church later on, but just stay that. Stay out right. You can't roll up on her. Oh, oh, there she is. I'm going to go in there. Yeah. Oh, there he is. I'm going in there. You can't do that. Carla. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. All right, next one. Y'all's favorite spot. Mm-hmm. It's off limits to both parties for at least four months. That's right. Take nobody no. else over there. Yeah. Why you get to go to the spot? Right, right. right. Yeah. Yeah. At least four months. Keep it 100. Yeah. Here's another one. Okay. Uh-huh. Mm. Texting your favorite song to each other is off limits. Yeah. You can listen to it, you can cry to it, you can play it over and over, but you can't send it. <laughs> you send me this today. damn song. Yeah. I'm trying to move on. And I'm telling you. Hey, hey. 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 Now listen to and this. You. One. And you. All y'all stuff. Uh huh. All possessions mm-hmm. is collected at one time and one time only. <laughs> Anything that's left behind will be thrown away by both parties. I like that. You ain't going like to keep that. coming over here looking that's for fair. stuff. Yes, that's fair. Yes. You see my red shirt? You can't keep coming back shirt. over here. I got company you in the closet looking for your tank top. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he keeping it real. Man, uh-huh. here's uh-huh. another one. He, he should know. <laughs> uh-huh. hit, a, hit a big one right here. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Nobody mm. is allowed to talk to each other's mama. Uh-huh. <laughs> there we go. Uh-huh. That's, a, that's a round of applause, baby. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a good one, Steve. Leave my mama out of this. You can't be friends with your yeah. mama, mm-hmm. and right. you can't be friends with my mama. I Stop come home, you sitting up there talking to my mama. mama. What the hell? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you hear that, Lisa? That's a good one, Steve. I like it. Hey, I'm Ms. over Jones. here trying to pick up some greens, and you in here talking. <laughs> Rolling your eyes when I walk in the door? Yeah. Now, here's the next one. Yeah. Okay. All parties should find a new church home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, that's fair. Definitely. Fair. Yeah, we can't worship together. I love Pastor Wiggins. Well, you can't yeah, go there no more. Not no more. Okay. All your friends should be divided up equally, mm-hmm. except the ones you hate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can have him. You yeah. can have Here's her. another one. Uh-huh. No posting of nude pictures. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like her naked mm-hmm. or him Wait dressed up like the damn Easter Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> that was the private. <laughs> What about <laughs> I'm gonna do I'm gonna finish this one. Yeah. All right, I listen. want to know about old, old naked pictures. All right. On, gonna... <laughs> well, nephew Tommy has a prank fall coming up, and uh, we'll finish out Steve's breakup rules <laughs> right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, is my strawberry letter for today. The subject, my husband is a thug and a prominent pastor. What? But uh, right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Nav? I'm going to throw this one up for my pops right here. Can I have your kidney? Can uh, I have? That was his favorite. Your huh? kidney. That was pops' favorite right there. Let's yeah, run it, baby. Hello. Uh, hello, I'm trying to reach uh, Brother Conley. This is Conley. Uh, how you doing, bro? This is Deacon Patterson calling from the church. How you doing today? Uh, Deacon Patterson? Yeah. 
Just doing fine. And yourself, sir? I'm doing good. Doing good. You know, the church is behind you on what you're going through, and we we praying for you, man. We know all about the, you know, you going uh, in the surgery on Friday to get your to get your pancreas removed. So I wanted to give you a call, man, have a word of prayer, and let you know that we all are, are pulling for you, and we know that, that the man upstairs is going to pull you through this success. Well, God bless and keep you. Uh, that deacon, God bless and keep you, because I tell you, I'm going through something here. Me and my wife, we've been talking about it, and uh, we've been praying on it, and it sure is a wonderful thing to to know that your church is with you, and, and y'all thinking about me in prayer. I, I I really had to take this this to the Lord. I, this is a serious thing with me, and uh, I ain't never had an operation before in my life, and right, I right. know I need it. My wife have made it clear, the doctor have made it clear, and I, I believe I'm ready to go forward, deacon. And we're going to give the victory to who the victory, the victory is much to deserve. Lord. Yes, sir. He's, he's uh, the victory. He's yeah, the victory. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me have a word of prayer with you, Brother Conley, if you don't mind. Uh, just bow your head for me. Father God, we ask right now. We yes. ask right now that you touch Brother Conley as he goes in on Friday. Please, Lord. Put your hands on him. We ask, Father, that you hold on to the doctor that's getting ready to go and put surgery on him. Yes. We ask that you make sure that the doctor... He's got a, a strong eye hmm. on that morning. Walk with him. We ask that, that, that he got a steady hand when he got the scalpel in his hand. We ask that you hold on to him. Please. As yes. he goes into a surgery, because we know come Saturday morning, <laughs> the victory going to belong to Brother Conley and the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We know all of this, but we, we, we ask that you take that pancreas and you remove it out successfully. Please. Close him back up like it was never been entered in before. Walk with me, Jesus. That's what we ask, and we ask you, Lord, at the same time yes. that they're removing this pancreas, Lord. We ask that you reach around his backside, and we ask that you touch his kidney, Lord. Touch his kidney and make it whole. Make it 110%. We want you to make that, that kidney like it's been the best kidney Excuse ever me, known. Deacon. Deacon. That's Deacon. Deacon Woo, Pat, Deacon Patterson. Yes. Yes, uh, yes sir. Ain't, they, no, sir. There, there's nothing wrong with my kidney, Deacon. I'm doing I'm doing fine. The Lord is the Lord has done made it well he's gonna work on my pancreas. That's what the doctor's operating on. They done oh, prepped oh. me for it and that's what they plan to remove. So uh, really? they, my kidney is fine. They did what they call one of them MRIs and everything else is fine. They ain't working on nothing but my pancreas, sir. Right, right, right. Well, well let, 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 let me say, I'm glad you brought that up, because this, 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 this wasn't the reason why I called you. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, and of course, I did call to pray for you. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, because yeah, I want to make sure that, 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 that you make it through this successfully. But one another, another reason why I'm getting around to this here is uh, what I want to ask you, and I know, we, we, you know we've never met face-to-face. I've seen you a couple of times, like I said, at the church, but you've been out most of the time uh, with your sickness and, and whatnot. But mm-hmm. now, what, what I was going to ask you was... Yeah. It, it, and, and I know this is, I hate to come at you in the final hour when you're getting ready to go have surgery and all that. But if, if you don't mind, if, if you could see it in your heart to, to, to see, to do something for somebody else. Yes, sir. Uh, that's, that's the Lord's will. You're always supposed to help those who can't. Right, to right. Do but, it. And I'm glad you, you think like that. Mm-hmm. Now, when they go in on Friday morning and, and remove that pancreas out, do, do you think, that 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 they could go in and and get one of your kidneys because I need one. Hold hold on just a minute, Deacon. I, what yeah. you say? Uh, what, what you say? See 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 what else? See, I've been going through myself with a, a little ailment, and, and and I'm wondering if, if if I need a kidney, and I'm wondering if you can give me one of yours when they go in to get your pain because they gonna already have you open. Did you say you wanted them to take one of my kidneys? Yeah, and give it to me because I need one. You need a kidney. Yeah. But what, what, what? I mean, you already gonna be laying there open. Wait a minute, Mister. You need a kidney. I need help with my pancreas. You gonna call me with some <laughs> like that, man? This ain't no work of the Lord. Now you said you, you a deacon? Yeah, deacon yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, Deacon Patterson, my name. But see, what I'm asking you is, what, what no, harm you ain't is it, me, man? Bro- Brother Conley, what harm is it if you already open and laying on the table? Oh, you ain't heard a damn thing I said, have you? I said I'll be, man, you crazy as hell. Now, what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to need to call the pastor. Because, see, it's a <laughs> going on here. You say you knew? You man a damn new, mister. Matter of fact, you too damn new to know who you're talking to. What, 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 what I'm saying is you have two, two like you said, you say they did the MRI. And you're I don't to... give a <laughs> what I said they did, man. I got two kidneys, you got two. One of yours bad, that's your <laughs> problem, mister. Let me tell you something. I'm trying to get well, and you calling with this 
you say you're a new deacon. You damn sure is, and you won't be at that church long. I tell you that because if I ever get close to your sister, we got some reckoning to do. What is it going to hurt for you to give me one of them kidneys if both them, if both them kidneys is good? It ain't going to hurt a thing because you ain't getting my kidney, man. It ain't going to hurt what, what is wrong with you? Say, man, all I'm saying is if you're going to be open and laying on the table, what is it going to hurt for you to give me one? Oh, now you're going to tell me I'm open and laying on the damn table. What kind of a prayer are you in charge of, mister? Let me tell you something. Obviously, I need to meet you before I get to the hospital. And maybe I can help take out that damn bad shit of yours. I can tell you that. We it out. You won't feel a damn thing. How about that? I'll be damned if you're going to call and talk me out of one of my damn kidneys, man. I'm trying to live just like you tried it. Let the Lord take care of me because what you talking about ain't got a damn thing to do with Jesus. You can kiss my and get off my phone. That's what you can do. Can I say one more thing to you? What? Is you listening to me? Man, I don't listen to you and you ain't talking about nothing. That's got nothing to do with what's going on with me, mister. You running a game? If I could get to you, I'd put lead in your say, you I, But can I just say one more thing, and then I'm going to let you go. Is you listening? For what? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your daughter. Oh, Lord have mercy. That girl, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Jesus. <laughs> hey, you all right? Brother Conley. Man, man, you done made me use language that I swear I don't know, but I heard my neighbors them using that. I done stopped a long time ago talking that way. Please forgive me. Lord have mercy. I, whoo. Y'all, I'm going to have to. Lord have mercy. My heart is palpating here. Lord have mercy, Jesus. This, this ain't me. This ain't me. And you, i tell you what. And I, I, I enjoy Steve Harvey and Nephew Tommy. I do. Brother Conley, I got to ask you one more thing, man. What is the baddest, I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land? It's got to be. It's got to be y'all. <laughs> it's got to be y'all. Hell, I don't even remember the name of it now. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. Lord help us. I ain't going to forget it now. I prayed that thing at the beginning, didn't I? I was praying that thing now. Yeah, you yeah, did. Well, you yeah, did. Yeah, it uh-huh. <laughs> you know, if you, well, why you open? <laughs> if you open, uh-huh. you don't mind if they just reach around there. And mm-hmm. let me get one of them kidneys, because I need one. That, you don't mind, do mm-hmm. you? Mm-hmm. Get smooth, cussed out by a deacon. Ain't nothing wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> <sighs> Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Not only am I shooting my TV show ready to love in your city, the city of brotherly love, but I'm also telling them jokes. That's right. Helium Comedy Club. That is July 26, 27, 28. The nephew is in town. Tickets are on sale right now. Now, uh-huh, I said it. All right, Shirley, it's on you. Up next is Strawberry Letter. My husband is a thug and a prominent pastor. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. See that? Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the Strawberry Letter. Thank you, nephew. Subject, my husband is a thug. And a prominent pastor. Okay. Uh, Dear Stephen Shirley, I've been married for seven years. I'm 43 and my husband is 38, but he acts like the world owes him something and always has a chip on his shoulder. He is argumentative and a wannabe thug. He grew up in a rough area and he had to make it out of the hood on his own, but he won't acknowledge that he's in a much better place spiritually and financially now. He will preach a good sermon on Sunday. But Monday through Saturday, he curses, drinks, and he's a womanizing thug. He curses like a sailor, and he loves to brag about fighting and who's behind he could whoop if he had the chance. He's cheated on me twice. The second time it happened, I checked out of the marriage. I would love to divorce him, but I can't because he is my sole source of income. I got laid off in April of last year, and I'm having a hard time finding a full time time job. He stands in the pulpit on Sundays while I sit amongst the two or more women he slept with at the church. A few Sundays ago, a female church member approached me and said my husband made inappropriate remarks to her. I told her that she should tell her husband. A couple of days later, 
My husband came home and said he got into a verbal altercation with the lady's husband, and I acted surprised. My husband was flustered and embarrassed. I'm thinking all of the men in the church need to know what he's up to. The two church members he slept with are married, and I think their husbands should know what my husband has been doing. Should I start a war at the church or leave vengeance up to the Lord? Well, I, I'll say no, definitely don't start a war at the church. And First Lady, you know the Bible does say vengeance is mine. You know that. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Um, so you already know the answer to that. The question is, what are you you going to do? I mean, I'm trying to figure out how you're still with him. He's a hypocrite. He's supposed to be a changed man and, you know, all of that, practice what he preaches every Sunday. And, you know, of course, I'm not saying that he should be perfect because, you know, he's still a man, of course. But um, nothing in the letter says that he's a man of God, except for that he goes Sunday and preaches and preaches a good sermon. But after that, Monday through Saturday, you know, he's all in this thug life or whatever he's been trying to do. Um, you say he's a womanizing thug, but then you're dependent upon him financially. So that makes it hard for you to leave. He's a cheater. You've been humiliated every Sunday when you see these women's faces. Uh, your man is sexually harassing women at the church and, and just wrong. He's just wrong on every level. I mean, you can't change him, but I, I guess, uh, you know, I, I guess you should be planning your escape. I mean, I, I say escape because you got to get away from him at least for a little while. You got to do something. I mean, he's not showing any signs of stopping. He's not showing any signs of remorse or anything. And he's being very disrespectful and, and self-destructive, you know, really trying not to, I, I, I do ask you this, try not to make any emotional decisions like telling the husband, you know, like you said at the end of the letter, let God handle that. Um, you just continue to look for a job because, you know, something is going to give eventually. See if you have any friends or family members you can trust that maybe can help you. And in the meantime, maybe you could suggest counseling. I doubt if he'll go. Maybe you can suggest that. But definitely you have to change your situ your pattern, what you're doing. So start saving up if, if you can, you know, get a little part-time job or something. You're looking for full-time. But you, you got to get out of there because this is not healthy, especially for you, Steve. You know, this letter right here, it starts off as a major conflict, just the subject. Mm -hmm. My husband is a thug and a prominent pastor. What? Okay, let's just deal with the he's a pastor part. Because he's really not a thug. He's really, really not. He, nothing in this letter he does is thuggish. I'm just, but we, but he's supposed to be a pastor. So let's get with the conflict right away. He acts like the world owes him. First of all, you took 43 and he 38. What did he say to you to get you in the first place? I don't even understand this here, but that ain't what the letter's about. But let me show you the conflict of him being a prominent pastor. First thing, he acts like the world owes him something. Here's another one. He always has a chip on his shoulder. Hmm. Here's another one. He's argumentative. And last but not least, he's a wannabe thug. How the hell did he get to be the pastor? <laughs> right. I mean, just these four qualities right here. How did he become a prominent pastor? He grew up in the work in a rough area, had to make it out the hood on his own. How many you know how many of us got that story? Three on this show. <laughs> Three on this show. Oh uh, uh, damn near everybody I know. <laughs> That's <laughs> anything damn near got yeah. that story. Everyone Hell, all us have. on this show got that story. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what is he talking about? He don't acknowledge that he's in a much better place spiritually. What? I can't I'm, tell. I'm, I'm, this letter just too much. For me. All right, here we go. He will preach a good sermon on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, he cusses, he drinks, and he's a womanizing thug. Mm. Okay, now let's 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 go back. He's your husband, and you're putting up with the cussing, the drinking, and the womanizing. He cusses like a sailor, and loves to brag about fighting. 
Hold on, Steve. And who's behind he could whoop if he had a chance. Mm-hmm. We'll have part two of Steve's response Whooping coming up at 20, 23 minutes has. after the hour. Subject, my husband is a thug and a prominent pastor. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, my husband is a thug and a prominent pastor. All right. The prominent pastor has these following qualities. The world owe he acts like the world owe him something. He always got a chip on his shoulder. He's argumentative, and he's a wannabe thug. You're married to him. He worked his way out the hood, but he won't acknowledge that he's in a better place because he wants to hold up this little thug mentality for some dumbass reason. He'll preach a good sermon on Sunday, but Monday through Saturday he cusses, drinks, and he's a womanizing thug. So he has a lot of women, and obviously you know this. Cuss is like a sailor. He loves to brag about fighting and who's behind he could whoop if he had a chance. You always got the chance to jump on somebody. If that opportunity is available 24-7, you just go on over there and start to fight. If that's what you want to do. He just talking. He running his damn mouth. He ain't whooping nobody ass. But this dude right here is worse than that. Now, you said he's cheated on me twice. The second time it happened, you checked out the marriage. Then you say, I would love to divorce him, but I can't because he's my sole source of income. Okay. Now, we have to deal with this part for a second. So, I understand that. I mean, look, don't don't think I don't. So, I got it. You you ain't got no means of taking care of yourself and everything. I, I get it. I'm, I'm not naive to that. But now, let's go over what you have to swallow to have this roof over your head and a car to drive. He act like the world owe him something. He's argumentative, got a chip on his shoulder. He's sleeping with women at the church. You know about it. And you got to deal with all that if you want to keep having the key to that house. I, I just, I don't, is it worth it? Is it worth it? You know, I would love to divorce him, but I can't because he's my sole source of income. I got laid off in April last year, having a hard time finding a full-time job. He stands in the pulpits on Sundays while I sit amongst the two or more women he slept with at the church. Woo! You, a hard one. You a bad girl. That's a tough one. You, 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 you a bad girl, man. You, you, you's a bad girl, and you gotta swallow a lot. Look, I don't know where your relatives at. I don't know who you could move in with temporarily. I don't know if you think you're walking away from something and leaving it to somebody else. But you ain't got nothing, though. Right. I mean, he's doggish, man. This dude is doggish. But here the one that got it. A few Sundays ago, female church member approached me and said my husband made an inappropriate remark to her. You told her you should tell her husband. A couple days later, my husband came home, said he got into a verbal altercation with the lady's husband and acted surprised. What happened to all that ass whooping he was yeah. going to do? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. See, remember that? Right. Remember that? Yeah. You know, yeah. if if you really wanted to whoop somebody's ass, I, this was a perfect opportunity. Uh-huh. Dude up in your face, accusing you of something you probably going to act like you didn't do. So you going to act like you didn't say it. You got to because you the pastor. Because you can't admit it because you know if you admit you did what you said, you know this dude going to light into you. So your little husband is a little coward. Now, my husband was flustered and embarrassed. I, once again, what happened to this ass whooping he been wanting to do? <laughs> See, the man approached you and now you flustered and embarrassed. Where is all these ass whoopers at, man? <laughs> Will you come on? Give me one. Come on, Jack Johnson. Show me something. All right. I'm thinking of all the men in the church that need to know what he's up to. I, the two church members he slept with are married, and I think their husband should know what my husband has been doing. Okay, now. Your husband has been talking about whooping a lot of people's behind. But if you go to these women, husband and tell them this, he gonna, he, he sure gonna be involved in some ass whoopers then. And he ain't gonna want neither one of them. But they gonna do something to your husband. 
See, you they they gonna do something to him, man. So I agree with Shirley. I don't think you should say it to them. I think the bigger problem for you is what you gonna do. I right, think that's right. the bigger problem. I think your situation, you should start focusing on you. You've already checked out the marriage. It, it ain't much of a marriage. What you're willing to lose, you don't have. You don't have no... He's disrespectful. He's misleading. He's overbearing. He's the bully pulpit. He's abusive to you. He treats you any kind of way. And if I were you, I would just find a way to remove myself from that situation. All you got to do is go on about your business. You ain't you ain't got to do nothing. You can't stand in the pulpit, claim to be God's man, and be doing what you want. You might be getting away with it to them people, but you ain't getting away from God. You can walk away from this. Go set yourself up. Go stay at a relative's house. Get out of that situation because the London Bridge is falling down. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Post your comments. Thank you, Steve, on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. Check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, there's a new study out and researchers have identified a strong sign of lying is uh, mimicking the body language of the person they're lying to. Mm. A liar and a copycat. The title of a new study uh, now published in the Royal Society's Open Science Journal could later lead to uh, applications of the theory in criminal justice. Wow. So, Steve, Tommy and Junior, what's your physical tell when you're lying? Oh, I do uh, a lot of blinking. Ooh, let's see. Can you not? First. Yeah. Can you not look? Why at would we sit here eye? and tell that right there? Why would we do that? We know. Tell I'm just. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! I ain't got no tail. I lie to your ass dead in your face. And you ain't got no tail. <laughs> dead ass. Oh, ain't no tail like that. I think I didn't, my lies. Well, you can't ever bust me on the original lie. You you can go days and do some fact checking and come up with the truth, but the, the moment I'm telling the lie, oh, 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 oh. very con- oh, very I'm, very I'm convincing. convincing, girl. What what tale? I think you get me louder right now. Sure, sure. What color is your shirt? What color is your shirt? What color shirt do? But it's not black. Too. It is it's it's leopard. See, excuse me. <laughs> yes, when it's have you leopard. Ever seen, when have you ever seen a black leopard? <laughs> <laughs> That's a jaguar. Yeah. That's a jaguar. <laughs> Wipe your camera off. <laughs> You're just going to go with the lie. Go just keep with it going. the lie. No, right there. You got to keep it going. Well, have you ever been hey, busted? Hey, let me ask y'all something. What? Have y'all... Not immediately. Wait, let um, me ask y'all something. Y'all fact. probably y'all ain't never took a polygraph before. Uh, never. No. Uh-uh. That I would know, be a no. Like. You took <laughs> yeah. one of them. You took a polygraph oh. before. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, you a comedian? Oh, we're strange. What the hell you taking a lie detector test? Yeah, what no. you doing taking a polygraph? I didn't become a comedian until I was twenty-seven. I didn't get famous at this till I was thirty-eight. A, a polygraph? Have I ever took a polygraph? I have federal charges. The hell you mean? Stop talking. Stop. Please, Steve, Stop. please. You have a No, brand. all them gone. I've been cleared. I'm fine. It's been way more than seven years. I can't get on none of this here. I took polygraph. Oh, you have no Three of them passed. Every last one of them was lying my ass off. The whole time? <laughs> lied right to his ass. <laughs> you need to go on First 48 or something. <laughs> See if they can crack. The only thing got me was that video surveillance. I was standing there right there with the dude. Yeah, yeah, when the truth that's will what, do. That's how when you get good at it, Shirley and huh? Carla. What? what? You have to lie when you don't have to lie. That get, that gives you it's the practice. expertise at it. Yes, See, y'all wait till it's time to lie. No, no, no work on that. No, I'm I'm a a practice, horrible oh. liar. I'm a horrible liar. Work on I, that. I yeah. really am. Yeah. I really am. I'm the worst. All right. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so guys, here's a question for you. Do you have a hiding place in your home to just have a few minutes alone? You know, I mean, everybody should have some place, some little getaway place that they can have some me time. For instance, some women like to have what they call a she shed or a small room that they can read in or just chill in. I, I You know what? I love the bathroom. Men usually go into the garage or, or their man cave or the basement or someplace. Uh, do you take an extended break in your home? 
hiding place? Do you do it every day is the question? Or uh, does your family know not to disturb you when you're in your favorite room or your hiding place? Uh, come on, Steve. I know you take time for yourself. Yeah, You've I do. Always yeah. done that. Yeah, yeah. I go. I go to San Diego. <laughs> you leave the house? Yeah, get the <laughs> hell out. Can't follow me down there. <laughs> Damn grandkids know how to use the elevator and everything. I'll be damned. I'm going to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> It's beautiful there. <laughs> I don't care if it is. It's just they not there. <laughs> Shirley, you got one? Yeah, I love, I, I will be in my bathroom for hours. Okay. Hours. Hours in the bathroom. In the bath because I have a TV in there and, you know, I do my makeup, you yeah. know, yeah. I, I don't mean the, the water you don't, closet. You don't mean the toilet. No, 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 uh, no. I don't I mean that. I spend most of my Somebody time. Say, you I check spend that. most no, of my no, time no. in the bathroom. No, no, no. Not there. I just <laughs> mean the in the outer part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's a separate yeah. little With room. With the bathroom. I got my TV right in front of the toilet and the computer. <laughs> oh, uh-uh. Now, that's how you go. Yeah. From now on, yeah. that's how you I go. I don't miss nothing because when I'm watching a game, I just get up and go on in the bathroom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the but wall yeah. right in front of you. That's yeah. fly. That's oh, fly. I ain't done that. Up a little high where you can keep your head up. You don't want to look <laughs> evil. Keep, keep your head up. Your digestive tract is more open. Uh, <laughs> wow. Just slightly uh, above eye level. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, Tommy? I'm in my theater. Oh, uh -huh. I can get away from him in the theater. Oh, did you hear that rich ass yeah, statement? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did you hear that, nice, Junior? Nice, nice, now, you nice said up. a rich ass statement, and I ain't say nothing. You nice. said my kids on, my, my grandbaby's on the elevator. I ain't say nothing about your elevator in your house. See, I, didn't I ain't say even paid that no attention. Yeah, I know I you did. I said I was going to, because uh, I can't go he up or down. Go ahead, T. You got a theater. No rooms in this show, too. I uh -oh. thought I had it limited. Stop. Uh, okay. Stop. All right, well. How y'all bypass his elevator on my theater? Hey, Junior. Huh? Which one of your rooms in your house is your theater? Yeah, let's hear from the poet. Oh, oh, I don't have no. <laughs> a theater? What I had to do is take some some um, drapes and put them on the side of the TV. <laughs> make my ass a theater. <laughs> With the Just, remote. Well, the remote and everything. I'm going to make a theater. Hold on, y'all. Come out the kitchen. Them, them drapes going to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make a theater. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. That boy, that ball, the boy, that chateau must be nice. I ain't been yeah, yet, though. Yeah, me, I go to my theater. <sighs> what? It's, it's, it's yeah. Early, it, it was, never mind. The what? 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 Where's daddy at in this here theater? Girl, go down front. See if he down now. I said, go down to the theater. I better take my head down to AMC. Go look in the balcony. See if he up there. Daddy. Uh, uh, Man, You asked me where I go to get away. That's all I said. Man. <sighs> Well, Tell the me. Lord is still blessing He's blessing you, yes, man. I didn't yes, even yes, know yes, you yes, had yes. a theater, Tom. Mm -hmm. I'm good. sitting up here talking to you like you ain't had one. I got to change how I talk to you. How, how were you talking to him at first? Like he ain't had no theater. Uh -huh. <laughs> now he got a theater. I got to change how I talk to him. Man, Mr. Nephew now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Nephew, what time you go down to the theater? <laughs> oh, what a hit. Oh, what a hit. <laughs> so, Steve, in case you don't make it to San Diego, what, what room in your home do you go to? Where do you go uh, in your house? I go all the way down to the basement. Uh -huh. What's down there, though? Down there, just a little man cave I got. Oh, oh okay. All right, Big Steve. Uh, <laughs> all right, coming up, uh, more of today's yeah. trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show. And uh, we'll be back in 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. Wow. We'll be in the thin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> According to the Washington Post, getting hot and sweaty between the sheets can feel like a workout. And several recent studies um, look into answering is sex exercise. Researchers in Spain studied couples and found that sex counts as moderate exercise as it revs up the heart rate and burns calories. But just how much varies widely. The amount of time people spend having sex also varies with young, healthy couples going at it for an average of 32 minutes while Woo. couples with health conditions last about 19 minutes. So here's a question for you guys. Are you doing that kind of time? Yeah, that's me right there. What? 
Yeah, go back to health conditions. That's where I'm at. Nineteen. <laughs> nineteen. <laughs> now you're a nineteen minuter. Not twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So come on, sexy guys. Do you consider uh, sex a workout? Yeah. And uh, yeah. do you ever look at your yeah. fitness tracker to see how many calories it burns or your heart rate? Mm-hmm. That's the question. No, I ain't done no. that. I ain't yeah, yeah, no. oh, yeah. I can't, I can't no. have nothing on me when I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have no extra cords or nothing. I got some cords. Asleep. I can't yeah, have no I'm watch that caught on the sheet or none of that. I can't have nothing throw my rhythm off. I can't hear no alarm go off. I can't hear. <laughs> yeah. Warning, warning, you're in the red, you're in the red, your heart rate is too high, slow down, slow down. (laughs) You're dying, you are dying. (laughs) Can you add it? Coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. Who is this guy? We I don't know. know I don't know him. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it's time now for another round of Would You Rather. Uh, here we go. Would you rather never be able to take a hot shower or never be able to eat fried food again, specifically fried chicken and fried catfish? Would oh, I never, I never, I never have fried food again. Yeah. I can't take a shower. Hot shower. Oh, no. Uh-huh. Hot shower. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, who on a cold shower? <laughs> a lot of people take cold showers. Uh-uh. I don't know how. I don't. But they do it. Uh-uh. Nah. Uh-huh. No, I'm through with the fried chicken. I need the shower. I, I, yeah. I take too many a day. I need that shower. It can't be cold. Uh, oh, yeah, we learned yesterday your nephew just... takes three showers a day. <laughs> y'all He's stop. Clean. Stop letting him tell y'all that. I He's live clean. with him before taking no damn three showers a day. Well, you, you got stuff to do. He on the set. He got you radio show. He got radio show. He tour. And he got TV show. And a game show. Where the hell he got time to take three damn showers a day? <laughs> what y'all be letting him tell y'all this stuff for? I do. We know he's Wait, a jerk. Three damn folks. showers. Hold up. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let, uh-huh. let me paint this picture for you. He got a four hour radio show that he do every day. Uh huh. He got a TV show. He got a uh-huh. game show. He tour. Uh-huh. He got kids. He got to go to baseball games with. He got to go to proms and stuff with. He got family time and he got a wife. How he take three showers a day? <laughs> Man, he work. <laughs> Y'all letting him tell you that fault. I did and, too. And, 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 how would you know all this? Because yeah. <laughs> I got more than he got. They <laughs> <laughs> got no time for no damn three showers a day. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make this money, man. Three damn showers a day. <laughs> oh, God. Hell, <laughs> I get home sometimes, I fall asleep in my office. Ain't gonna be no damn shower. <laughs> now. But you're rich. Uh, sitting up in here. Oh, man. <laughs> sitting up here. You just like my stylist, Ellie, with his little simple ass. <laughs> Over, overdoing and all this, all lotion and baby in his damn. So get your love. We can go, man. <laughs> sitting up in here rubbing all between your damn toes. Put some oil on your foot and let's go. <laughs> sitting up in here like he take all his damn showers. Man, you ain't that damn clean. We got to go. <laughs> I, I do. <laughs> oh, man, thank, you. thank you. All right. <laughs> all right. Next one. Hell, y'all uh, let him tell you that for. Go ahead, Sheila. Would you rather have the ability to read saying. minds? Or would you rather have the ability to move objects with your mind? Moving them objects. You want to read minds or would you want to move things them. with your uh-huh. mind? I know you don't like me all no. right. I don't need to read your mind for that. <laughs> no, I don't need that. I want to move stuff with my mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You walking down the street, I move that mailbox over in front of your ass. You can watch your money. Oh, man. Ooh. Coming up at 49 minutes after the hour. It's our last break of the day, and we'll get some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, Steve. Last break of the day. It's been a great day. <laughs> What a day, what a day. Yeah, it's been a crazy day today. So, Steve, now it's time for you to take us home with your closing remarks. Uh, My closing remarks today uh, are going to be based around the value of yourself. I think this is important. Tommy sent this to me. 
you know, a billboard. And it really triggered me to think, and I'm going to share that with you. But it all pertains to the value of yourself. This can pertain to you in terms of reaching your goals, your dreams, or in business. And this is for you to consider in the relationship of love. It is amazing to me why I talk to people and people talk about how they're being treated and handled and represented and dealt with and how they can't seem to get nobody to see their value and their worth. And I'm sitting up here going, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't try to get someone to see something in you that you don't see in yourself. It starts with you. You know, you've all heard the saying, uh, beauty is on the inside. It's not just skin deep. That's true. Confidence is not an outward emotion. It's something that starts from within. Everything starts from within and it exudes and, 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 and manifests itself in the outward shape or form. So if you want people to value you, you must first value yourself. I tell my daughters all the time, you can train a man how to treat you. Well, daddy, how do you train a man? You just don't accept bad treatment from him. If you don't accept bad treatment from him, little girl of mine, then guess what? He can't keep giving it to you. A person can only treat you the way you allow them to do it. If you don't accept a man coming to pick you up late all the time, but you stop going with him every time he late, the next time he want to go out with you, he got to be on time. Now, if he don't want to be on time, then guess what? You don't go out. You've trained him how to treat you. And if he don't line up with what you want, then guess what? He's not for you. At least you don't have to be mistreated the way he want to treat you by simply not allowing him to treat you any way he wants to. You cannot have high value for yourself and expect someone else to have a high value of you. That goes into the same thing with business. You can't go in and ask for a raise if you don't think you deserve one. What would cause you to walk in there and ask for a raise if you don't think you deserve one? If you don't have the facts to back up a raise, you can't want more money just because you done spent all the money you had. You got to go in there and ask for a raise because you can show value to the company. You're worth this much more to the company. The company has become this because of you. Then you can show your value. Then you can go in there with a raise and you can go in there with some confidence with the raise. It happens with goals and dreams. If you aim too low, your problem is you might hit it. But I'm going to say that for tomorrow. So it's what you think of yourself, how you value yourself. That matters most. Now, let me tell you what was sent to me. And listen to this real careful, because this is going to register with a lot of people. Listen to me. If you aren't being treated with love and respect, check your price tag. Maybe you've marked yourself down. It's you who tells people what you're worth. Get off the clearance rack and get behind the glass where they keep the value. It's you who tells people what you're worth. Get off the clearance rack and get behind the glass where they keep the value. Stop acting like you a sidewalk sale. Stop acting like you can be picked up at the swap meet. Stop acting like you belong in the junkyard. You a new car. Don't act like an old car. I don't care how old you are. To somebody, you got to be a new car. Stop putting yourself on the sales rack when clearly you deserve full price. If you lower the value for yourself, that's what we'll pay for you. And that's how we'll treat you. And that's how we respect. If you don't respect yourself, if I see you constantly disrespecting yourself, then you're going to turn to me and demand respect. How, how does that work? Be that be a coat where they got the lock on it. See, you can't take me off the rack and just try me on. That, no, that ain't how this works. See, but now you go over there to that valuable section in the store. You know, everybody been to Macy's. Mm -hmm. You got that stuff where you got to go get 
a salesperson to come and unlock it for you to even try it on, that's because they done put a value on that. Or you can go on over there and just put the little shirt on. T-shirts ain't locked up. Anybody can get one. If you steal this T-shirt, it ain't that big a loss. They ain't but $4, pack of three. But you come over here by this suede. Come over here by this fur and stuff. We got locks on this stuff right here because it has value. We know it has value, so we can't just let you try it on. Stop letting people just try you on. You got it? Put a value to yourself. Maintain it. You determine your value. Don't let other people do it. You do it. All right? Those are my closing remarks. Drop the mic. Drop the mic, baby. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Appreciate you, pimp. Needed that. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 